Snow 914. Good morning. We're starting another brand new week, and it's going to be a wonderful one. And I'm glad you're starting with the What's New show. And I'm kind of filling in for Nancy Nelson and Warren Martin, who, strangely enough, both took vacations at the same time. But anyway, it gives me a chance to meet some interesting people and to talk to you good people at home, even this early in the morning. Uh, I've got a gentleman here who's a teddy bear freak, him and his <laughs> wife. This Mr. O.T. Thompson, how are you? Good morning, fine. Do they call you O.T.? Yes, they do. O.T., I'm uh, M.F.F.J., and I'm never going <laughs> to tell you what all that means. Anyway, O.T., you and your wife have got a group of stores, and what are they called? Right. Called Toy Works. Right. Toy Works. Right. They're retail stores, toy, toy retail stores, you know. And toy Boy Works. Yeah, yeah, little, 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 right. Toy Works. <laughs> <laughs> hard to say no. this time of the morning, right. anyway. Now, well, how come you're involved in teddy bears? Because in your toy stores, you must sell more well, teddy we, bears. Well, we carry more than teddy bears in our stores, but we're doing a promotion in Butler Square, the 19th of September. Through Downtown the, Minneapolis. Right, uh, through the 27th. And it's the largest collection of teddy bears and bears that's ever been put together you in the United them? States. From Europe and all over the United States, from individuals, from a six, uh, 16-year-old girl out in Maine to uh, an eight-year-old boy in Texas. I mean, it's just amazing. And, and you uh, get them also from a local manufacturer. Yes, right. We have they? a number of them. We have Lemon Bear here. We have Animal Fair here in, in the Twin Cities. This is made by the North American Bear Company. It's a jogging bear, and of course his ears come through his top, <laughs> but that comes down, you see. And they make. Oh, this uh, will come off. Right. They make this bear here too. The one that's called uh, Douglas Bear Banks. <laughs> right. Oh, you little cutie! Mwah. At least you so, can't bite me. Right. Well, now. Do you think this is going to draw a crowd? We expect about twenty to 30,000 people uh, in and the Butler nine days. Butler Square, downtown that it's on. Minneapolis right. on 6th and 1st Avenue. Avenue. Right. That's yeah. where our first store we, uh, is. And we'll be in the new part of Butler Square in about 3,000 square feet. If we and count, how many teddy bears will you have? Well, if you count bears from this size on my lapel to bears. Well, we got to get a shot of that. Can you get in there? It's called get, the, get the, in the fuzzy there. bear. I'll hold that as still as I can. Look at that little teeny bear. That's a real right. little teddy bear. From this size to bears on cards or ceramics or made out of clay or whatever, 18,000. Or as big pieces. as that one over there. Or as big as this one over Who here. Who made that one? This is made by Charlene Kinzer. She's from e in the East. And she makes, the, they're all handmade, and she makes a whole series of, the, of more of the more wild bears as opposed to what? teddy bears. What would that handmade big bear cost? About $700. Yeah, well, there you go, see. Uh, the rich get richer. <laughs> the Listen, get one thing, as we were trying to get ready, we didn't even get out. We have a mink bear oh, do you? here with us. All and mink? we didn't even bring it on the set for some reason, left yeah, it in the box. Well, you're afraid that <laughs> I was going to keep that one for right. my very But they own. start at, you know, at 50 cents, and they go on up from there. Did you come up with this idea to publicize a new uh, Butler Square with Teddy well, Bears? Well, this is my wife's idea. And uh, Why I, isn't I put she it together. here today? She's running the stores. She'd be a lot more fun to talk to, you know. <laughs> I think so, yeah, right. she'd look prettier on camera, right. She's too. just working hard, that's Now, all. you folks at home, don't you agree with me? She so, should have come down here. Right. <laughs> now, so, what's the origin of the teddy bear? Well, now, the teddy I, bear came out of, a, uh, out of a series of articles and a very special cartoon on Teddy Roosevelt when he was out on a uh, bear hunt. And they didn't find any bears. And basically, they dragged a bear over and tied a rope around him, tied him to a tree. And Teddy Roosevelt refused to shoot that bear. And then the cartoonists picked it up and the other people in the Washington papers. Then uh, they uh, made some bears. And a guy sent it to Teddy Roosevelt and said, could I call this Teddy's Bear? And then it became known as Teddy Bear and from there on all the bears. But there had been bears Very made, stuffed bears made yeah. prior to that. But it is really called you know, the uh, Teddy Bear. Yeah. And this is one of them here. This is made by Woods and Woods, a, a company. And uh, this is the, one of the called Colonel Teddy. Now that's Colonel Teddy, and look, he's got the wire rim glasses on like Teddy right. used to wear, that pinch on the nose. Mm -hmm. I never can understand how people can stand <laughs> that. I knew a professor once that used to pinch him on his, that would drive me out of my gourd. <laughs> well now, will you be able to buy Teddy yes, Bears at this Yes, most thing? of the bears will be for sale. We'll have demonstrations of bear making. We have authors of the recent bear books coming. Franz Otto Steiff of the Steiff Company of Germany will be there on the 27th. 
Alison Nesbitt from England will be Country there on the 22nd, nice 23rd. Uh, nine. <laughs> <laughs> Ixnick for Ixnick. 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 <laughs> so uh, there will be a lot of activities going on. And on the evening of the 18th of September is a preview opening, and that's for the Children's Theater Scholarship Fund. What night is the 18th? That's a Friday evening. Friday and, evening right. will be special for kids. Right, and it's a thing where you really have to pay a little bit to come to it because the money goes directly to the Children's Theater. But then the rest of the time it's free and open to the public. And, it's and basically, how many days will it run? Well, it'll run from the 19th to the 27th. Starting Saturday. Right, through the next the Sunday. the 27th, that'll right. be seven, eight days, yeah. nine days. It's a long time. Yeah. Taking about 3,000 square feet to do it in. And You're going to be kind of tired when you get through. Well, I'm going to be, you know, hopefully propped up by a number You're of You're going bands. to have a lot of help, though. I think so, yes. It's well, been our start. pleasure to visit with the teddy bear man, and not his wife, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, O.T. Thompson of the Toy, Toy Works. Works right. stores in, in the Twin Cities area. Right. Thank you very, very much. Thank well, you. Well, what's up here next? Nancy and Warren, I could kiss. No, I, I love you both. Anyway, <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Okay, here we are, and we're going to introduce you to a young fella who is very wealthy, and he's from California, and he owns a big place that makes wine out there. Those are called wineries, right? Right. Okay, and his name is Steve Mittisall. Did I get it halfway right? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good, huh? You and your family, has your family been in it a long time Since making wine? Since 1854, yes. You raise the grapes, you make the wine, you have to sell the wine after you bottle it, market it, advertise it, all that sort of thing. Right. You're in against the, the big leagues, aren't you? Like Paul Masson and Christian Brothers and Gallo and all these yes, things. Definitely. How is it fighting those big shots? Well, it's kind of interesting. The industry never really fought one another. We always looked at it that it was more what we were fighting was lack of education of the consumers. So it's really been, uh, over the years, a gentleman's industry. A lot of help from one another and really still is. Do you, uh, do you get to Europe very often? Do they still drink as much wine in France as they're reputed to drink? Uh, a little bit less, but it's still, per capita speaking, way more than what we do in this country by tenfold. What, what do people in America drink most of? Uh, soft drinks. Beer? And, and a lot of beer, yes. Coffee. And then the hard stuff. Yes, which is uh, really losing ground uh, today to beer and Two. wine. Why do, you, why do you think that's happening? Well, I think it's twofold, really. I think it's far as temperance goes, as far as people getting into lo lower alcoholic beverage, lower alcoholic content. Drink for the taste instead of getting bombed. Exactly. And going exactly. out of your mind. And the whole health conscious thing yeah. that's Ending up today. in a funny farm. Ah, yes. <laughs> what kind of wines do you produce? Oh, we produce about 13 different Can varieties. Can I take a look at sure. the... This is... Let me hold it up here okay. for my cameraman. Mirasu, is that the way you say it? Yes. Mirasu. This is a uh, petite rosé, a dry rosé wine. Is that quite popular? Uh, yes. That it's type of wine? Fairly popular. It's been a big seller for you? It's, it's done fairly well for us. Rosés as a category is not doing Hand that me this well. one. This is a champagne or a sparkling wine that we do also. Now, I was told once that you could only use the word champagne if it came from Champagne, France, that county in France. True, except for uh, California, where we can label it champagne also. Well, you can, but you call it, call it also a sparkling burgundy. Well, it's uh, not sparkling burgundy, which would be a red, uh, a red champagne, just sparkling wine. This is uh, a light colored. Right, produced from white wine. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to do something, and I'm going to let you say what you want to say <laughs> before okay. we get through. Show me the proper way that a great wine connoisseur would test this wine. Okay. Well, why, don't, why don't we do one other thing besides that, then, since a lot of people in restaurants, there are certain things that happen that they don't understand also. So if we went through um, the whole affair of what might happen, and uh, a lot of consumers in a restaurant, of course, a cork is already pulled on this. So let's assume that the waiter has pulled the cork. And he then takes the cork and he places it in front of the head of the table or the person that has or ordered the wine. the guy that's paying the check. Yeah. <laughs> Always the guy who's paying the check. Okay. 
Um, what are you supposed to do? You know, they lay that cork in front of me. I never know what to do with it. Well, the reason that he does that is it shows how the wine was stored. With finer wines, or all wines that are cork finished, on they have side. to be laying on their sides so and the cork, cork stays wet. And the cork should be wet. wet. Right. And okay. that'll give you an indication if the cork is dry to really watch for the wine when it's poured. Should you smell that cork? Is that proper? Oh, you can. Certainly you can. It's not necessary. If the cork is pliable and damp, you know that the wine okay. is stored properly. Okay, step number two. Okay, step number two. Yeah, the, a small amount is poured. Yeah. Right? Now, now they now, always do that. They put right. just a little bit in. That's, that's to, to give you an opportunity to try the wine to make sure it's all that's right. That's for the host again. The first thing that you're doing, now maybe you wouldn't be doing it at a restaurant, but let's say if you were the connoisseur and you were trying a wine, an old wine or something very special, and there are various things that you're looking for. The first thing that you look for is color, mm -hmm. depending upon, obviously, red, white, or rosé. It should be a specific color. Watch your color. monitor so you don't jerk it out of the screen. Okay. You want to take close up. So in this case, uh, with a, with a rosé wine, you're looking for the color to be on the brilliant side. It shouldn't be cloudy. It also um, should be a nice rose color. It should not be orange, or it definitely should not be brown. Brown okay, would show. for black and white receivers, uh, this matches the color desirable very, right. very well. I noticed one thing. Can I interrupt you? Sure. I noticed you didn't put your fingers on the glass. No, and that's the reason for a stem on the wine glass, one of the reasons. One, of course, is so that you can check the clarity of the wine and all. Mm -hmm. um, the other is if you're drinking a cold, uh, cold wine, a chilled wine, which rosé would be, or a white wine, you don't want to uh, warm the wine up by putting your hands around the glass. Mm -hmm. The next thing that you're going to check is the aroma and the bouquet. Aroma is the smell of the grape itself. The bouquet is the smell of the wine. And you see people a lot of times, they'll twirl the wine in the glass. And what that does is allow more of the aroma to come up through it. So you're just going to get magnified. Sure smell the grapes. Smells like wine, right? Yeah. But I mean, the grape smell was very prominent. Yeah. And that should be, in a, in a case of a wine like this, it's a 1980 vintage, so it is new. And of course, the younger the wine, the more of the fruit flavor that you, you should be able to detect. Within our time limitations, is your wine for sale in this area? Yes, it is. For how long has it been for sale here? Oh, gee, I guess uh, six, seven years, oh, it or has longer been. than that, maybe eight or nine years. So if, uh, if you're a wine uh, person, why, you look for this uh, young man's mm -hmm. wine, he and his family, they make this out in San Jose, California, <laughs> <laughs> San Jose, California, and it's called Mirasan. Mirasan. We learned a lot from you, Mirasu, I'm sorry. And I uh, inherited a uh, bottle opener and a cork opener, which is the best one on the market, and I thank you very much for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being our guest. Appreciate Delightful it. Delightful young man. And now, right after this, we shall return. You're going to find this exciting, and get all the kids in the house. Oh, come on, get by the TV set now. You're going to enjoy this. I have with me from Texas Instruments, without a doubt the most famous name in calculators and computers there is in the world, and a lovely young lady from Dallas, Texas, show enough, Alicia Helton, H-E-L-T-O-N. Alicia, it's a pleasure Hi, Mel. having Thank you, you here on the What's New show. It's nice to be here. What's the newest thing that excites you about Texas Instruments? Our new category of products called Learning Aids. They're electronic products that are designed to help children learn. Let okay, now children usually don't like to learn much. They like just to have fun. That's right, but these use the same motivation and excitement that you find in the electronic games that kids carry around with them so much, and that's what makes them fun. Let me show you our newest one. This is called Touch and Tell. It's a vocabulary building product for preschoolers aged two to five. Uh-huh. Press a picture. I want you to press a picture. Let's try this one. Brown dog. I'll be a son of, can I do it? Sure. This is the car. Uh, hold it just a minute. Are you getting that uh, playback in there, folks? Okay, now I want to press, oh, look it. I want you to find I the didn't house. even touch. That's right. Oh. You're right. That's the house. This Where's is. The tree? 
Let's turn it off so we can talk. <laughs> this is Touch and Tell, our newest electronic learning aid for children ages two to five for vocabulary building. Is this washable? So it's washable. When the kids touch it, they can drool it. on it. Drop <laughs> peanut butter and jelly on it. Hey, and these that overlays is terrific. change. So you can what would that retail for? The suggested retail price on this product is sixty dollars. Oh, what a great gift from grandma and grandpa mm -hmm. to the kid. What do you figure the age range is on this? Ages two to five. Oh, it's sensational. Can you get different pictures and different You can different buy different carts? modules. Four different modules come with different overlays that go on them for additional vocabulary. Oh, that is sensational. Never knew such a thing like that existed. I know. They're brand new. This is Speak and Spell, our first electronic learning aid that uses synthetic speech. It came out in 1968, and it's to help children practice learning to spell. You turn it on. Press go. Spell can. Spell can. C A N. Press the letters. C A N. And press enter. Wrong. Try again. Ten. It wants us to spell ten. 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 Oh, I had the wrong word. We had the wrong e word. E N. That is correct. Now spell angel. Notice how it didn't get mad at you though when we came up with the wrong word. It just said yeah. wrong. Try again. Didn't scold spell me. Spell ten. I tell you. This product has a vocabulary. How many words does he ask you to spell in it? It has 150 words in it. You can buy additional modules that each have about 150 words, and there are nine of those. So we have a vocabulary. Do they get harder and harder and harder? All the way up to middle school, grade eight. Is that right? Right. What does that sell for? The suggested retail price on Speak and Spell is $75. Are these sold all over the, the Minnesota area where we're watched, Steve? Steve Kane is here doing nothing as usual, sitting over there. Let me show you this one. This is called <clears throat> Speaking Math. Yeah. Solve it. Level one. We press go. Eight plus seven is what? Want to press in the answer? Uh, eight and seven is uh. Fifteen. I'm afraid I'll. And make press my... enter. Oh, where's enter? Down here. That's right. Try five plus zero is what? Five plus zero is. Five. five and press enter. Well, that's, try again. You gave five it fifty. Plus zero is what? I made a mistake on this. It caught you too. Thing. That's correct. Now try oh. nine plus three. That's enough plus already. I'll oh, okay. I made one mistake out of two. That's enough. Let me show you speak and read which is a product that uses synthetic speech to help children learn to read. Mm -hmm. And this product comes with a book. And all of these words that are in this book are in this product. You know how when children every word, every word, and you know how when children are learning to read, they come to mommy and say, "Hey, mommy, what's this word?" Yeah, what's this? And what's she it? might be cooking dinner and not have uh -huh. time. Well, let me show you what this product does. We turn it on. Words app, level one. Press hear it. Uh, hear it. And press go. Press word. Let's pick that word right there. Great. Great. We spell it in. E R E A. Key. And press enter. It's going to go find it. It's searching. This word is great. This word is great. So it went and found the word and pronounced it for the child so the child can keep reading the story. Okay, let me give you a gator. Gator. G A T O R. Which word? G A T O R. Gotta go it's find searching, it. yeah. Ah, oh, gator's not in there. You probably have to go the whole thing, Alpha Gator. Anyway, we understand it. how it works, and you get this book with it, so it's it also comes with additional modules and books to expand reading from beginning reading up through grade three. It's a substitute mother. Well, I wouldn't say that, but no, it but has I mean it can relieve mother from having to run to the child every that's two right. minutes. That's right. It has all of the patience. These products are always there and always ready to help the child, even when the mother or the teacher's busy. Yeah. Were you ever in a beauty contest? No. How long have you been with Texas Instruments? Five years. You must enjoy it. Do you I, travel a lot? I travel some. It comes in spurts and starts. I'm traveling around the country right now telling now people about these the products. I'm involved in the design of these products. Are you? Mm -hmm. Point to one that you had a hand in designing. Speak and spell. 
did you? Right, I was very involved in the design of Speak and Spell. How long would this be worked on by developers before it could be put on the market? Actively for a year, but the technology to make the synthetic speech possible was done in our uh, labs for about 10 years before we were ready to put it in a product. Is that some human being's voice or that's is that a That's a human manual? being's, no, that's a disc jockey from Dallas, Texas who we took into a sound studio and recorded him and I was there to make sure he pronounced all those words correctly. Did, you, did he record every word in the dictionary or no, what? No, we build a vocabulary specifically for the educational goal of the product and then we work with that vocabulary and the speaker and the computer analyzes it and compresses it down to a small amount of information. Okay, now let's see this because I got to get that on before we run out of time. This is the 994A Texas Instruments personal computer. Now what's unique about our personal computer are these plug-in modules. See, it looks like a little cassette recorder, cassette tape, but it's not. Inside this are the integrated circuits, chips, semiconductors, whatever you want to call them, that make all your calculators and computers possible. And you plug them in right here and it brings all of the power of the computer at your fingertips. Press any key, and the one we're going to look at now is called Number Magic. It's an educational program for children and math. Let's say we want quick kid, quick quiz. We have a lot of choices. Let's see, ready to start, enter. Here we go, it says. It gives a problem. Four plus six. Six equals? Ten. A little Correct. rabbit's going to hop across the screen. Score 10. Three, Three plus four is? Place. Seven. Let's miss this one and see what it, get, it does to us. Well, the score is 20. Two plus four is nine. Okay. Uh-oh. Try again. Uh-oh. Try again. Now it's going to give it to us. And a new problem. Let's put nine on this one. Isn't that darling? If you want to do something else, you pull out the module, stick another one in. We get our main screen, press any key. We want to do early learning now. I hope you get a book with this one. You oh, buy you it. get a lot of books with this one. Early learning fun. Texas Instruments. We have met and enjoyed being with Alicia Hilton from Dallas, Texas. Thank you. Thank you.